Nancy Smith from One Stroke Painting. I'm a certified elite educator and this is my Thursday Facebook Live. So happy to see everyone I'm signing in. I'm on my own today. My husband had to go someplace. So he's normally my backup, reads the comments, let me know what's going on. But um, he's not here. So I will be doing this myself. And so just bear with me. I will stop every now and then, check comments, but try to keep abreast of what's going on. But like I said, this is my first time without someone take, taking care of my comments. So um, it's another learning experience for me today, which is good. And um, I'm really excited that uh, Facebook Lives are working out. I, and I hope you all are enjoying this. Today we're going to, what I think is a fun project, paint a palm tree. But um, before we get started, because I want to jump into the project, I just have to let you know what the certification specials are for this month, because there's only five days left, and then another educator of the month will be selected. So the first one I want to tell you about is the Skill Builder Level 1 at home. You receive eight Skill Builders. You receive the manual, supply kit, certification, and name badge. And most importantly, in my opinion, is training for me. And we'll just work until we get it done. And the normal cost of this certification is $823.65 plus shipping. Uh, but I'm discounting it for the month of August, $150. So that means your price would be $673.65. And again, I would just want to let you know that includes all personal one-on-one -on -one training. The next option for level one is the level one at home. And with that, you receive the manual supply kit, name badge and certificate. Also personal one-on-one -on -one training with me to, uh, complete all of the boards and pass them. The regular price is $700 plus shipping. That's over $50, but my August discount is $125. So that means your price would be only $575 plus any shipping that's over $50. Um, and finally, if you're in the area or you want to travel to uh, beautiful Catonsville, Maryland, um, we can do a three day in my home certification class. You would be responsible for your hotel or other accommodations as well as travel. The price for this is $519. So your my discount of $50 would make your price $469. Now when you arrive, I will have all the supplies have the table set up and we'll just start ready to go. But it is three full days of uh, painting. So just check those out. If you have any questions, just send me an email. My email is thepaintedvine at gmail.com. There's no space, the painted vine. And I'll be uh, get back to you as soon as I can, which usually if I can't get back like within an hour or so, it's because I'm in a class or on the road. So I always respond by the end of the day. So um, hope to hear from you on that. Okay, um, let me just check on comments. I just take, I will just take a few minutes throughout to check. Hi, Pat. Pat from North Carolina is here. And I know I can't say your name, but it's Chitra. I, and I know uh, her. So um, thank you for joining and Let's get started on this project. I'm going to turn my camera around, so just hold on a second as I do that. There we go. Can everyone see that? I'll just turn on some lights. That might help. Right there. Okay, so what I'm going to show everybody today is how to paint an ocean scene and a palm tree using our rake brush. And this is the rake brush. It's a flat brush. One, this is one half inch. It's flat. But if you see, there's a lot of little hairs sticking out at the top. 
normally people are familiar with this brush uh, with painting hair or fur um, grass at times but it makes beautiful beautiful palm fronds and that's what i'm going to show you okay so we're going to get started making an ocean and a beach so i use multi-surface paint i'm going to put teal on my palette and white i use titanium white put a little yellow ochre and just a smidgen of burnt umber. There we go. With this brush, you first want to dip it into clean water. I'll show you how I do this. This is our water basin. This is side that we use to clean our brushes. And then this is the side to rest our brushes during while we're painting if we so need to. So I'm just going to dip it into my water and then tap it onto my paper towel. First thing I'm doing, going to do is go into teal. But I do want to tell you, um, I've already marked my horizon line. And I did this in pencil, in light pencil. This is a 5 by 7 canvas. And I measured 3 inches up. So I'm going to have that as my, this will be my sky. And this will be the uh, water as well as the beach sand. So I already wet my brush. I'm just going to stroke just the bottom here. I don't... I'm not going to go up too far into the ferrule, but no, just like half. A lot of times when we load our brush, we go three-fourths. But in this case, I'm just st staying within a half because I want to see the strokes that, that are coming with the, the rake portion of the brush. Okay, so my horizon line, I'm going to make just straight horizontal lines. Just go straight across. Get more paint and i'm using straight teal i haven't added any colors to that yet and i do try to stay straight in this case it might not be totally needed because uh, and i'm going back and forth now but you always want to have a nice horizon line but in this case i'm thinking with the palm tree covering it if you get off a little bit that should be okay um, hello, Donna. Donna's from Colorado. Thank you for joining. And Donna, as I say, um, I don't have my husband to tell me who's here. So I'll stop every now and then to look up and check and see if anyone has questions. Okay, that was pure teal. I'm now going to go into a little bit of white. And I'm going to mix on my palette. I'm sorry, my canvas. I'm going to go back and forth. Horizontal lines. A quick mixing on the canvas. I don't want it that light at the top. I'm going back into a teal. You'll notice when you paint like this, you're always going back and forth, going back, getting more paint. If you get too light, you go back and get dark, but it's okay. Just keep going. Go down a little light here. And I'm going to stop at this point. I'm, I did about two thirds of the water there. Going to just wipe my brush off and go in to yellow ochre off to the side and mix in some white. Now I am mixing this because I do want a light yellow ochre on to start on the beach and that makes a perfect sand color. So I'm just going to go back and and I'm doing like crisscrosses here. I'm going back and forth, back and forth, getting getting that um, sand color blocked in. And you will see streaks of teal showing and that that's okay. Okay. Wipe my brush, get some of that mix off because now I want pure yellow ochre. And, I, and with this, I am going just side by the side. Light, I'm very lightly touching. 
Now you might say, oh, you could do that with a flat brush. Well, yeah, you could, but I want these little light bristles to be doing a lot of movement on the, on the canvas for me. And so that's why I'm not using a flat brush. Now I want it to mix that you don't want a line like that. So I am going to get just a small touch of floating medium. I forgot to add that earlier. Let me move my cursor there. Okay. So I'm going to get just a small touch of floating medium. I'm going back into this light teal right here because what I want to now do is blend the, the two lines together. And I, I want to get that teal color down into the um, sand color. Constantly wiping my brush. Get some more yellow ochre down here. Now I'm going to get some white because I want to now get some white waves in here. I'm holding my brush like this. I'm just going to let it scat splatter. Mm, not splatter. What, 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 what do you call this? Um, bounce. I bounce it. That's the word I'm thinking of. See how when I bounce, doesn't that look like waves? I think that's so cool. And then I'm just going to darken up my horizon line with pure teal. Okay, and then I want to go back into this yellow ochre. I'm really not happy how I blend how that top blended. So I'm just going to go back into teal and just add some teal here. Let's see if we can't get a nicer sand water line. Because I do want it to be nice. I don't want even though I know the tree's going to cover a lot of it. I do like to have a good look right there. Go a little more there. Okay, and I leave it at dark. And then I like I'll just squish some teal across. Okay, so this is the beach part. Now I'm going to have my tree come up here. So while this is wet, I want to just add a little tree shadow now. So I'm just getting a little bit of uh, burnt, burnt umber. I did a touch of floating medium too. I want this to be very light, just just a, an indication of a shadow. So I'm just going back and forth right there. And um, I'm doing this now while the sand's wet because I want it to all get blended. Okay, toss that one away. So um, I'm going to look at it. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I could add a little more, more yellow ochre or even a touch of white down here. And here again, I'm going to hold my brush like this and just go back and forth. Okay. So now I'm going to get the sky and that's with cobalt blue, also multi-surface. And I, I have plenty of white, so I'm going to use white. I'm also cleaning my brush. So here at the horizon, I want a very, very, very light blue. So I will mix that on my um, palette. So I just got a touch of blue. If you can see that, it's just barely um, any on the corner. And then I'm going to come in and get quite a bit of white and mix that. And see how just that little touch of blue <laughs> makes a pretty dark blue, actually. So there we go. Here again, I'm going to make a horizontal line just coming right across. And I am on the flat of my brush. And those little rake hairs are just scraping along different color there. Go up. As I go up, I'm going to get into darker blue. So using the same puddle of paint, I'm going into the dark blue. Just a touch and mix. Now notice I'm not going to mix that whole puddle because I may need to come back to that light blue. So I'm now into this darker blue. And I'll go back and forth with that. And I'm just scraping, um, bouncing the brush across the, uh, the canvas. There you go. Now I'm going to, I need, I want it just another little darker. So I added, I'm going to add a little more blue up here. 
and that's going to be the top. Should put it over here, huh? So I'm not bouncing back and forth for you guys. There you go. Going back and forth. Going into the medium blue here. Because I, I know sometimes we use the white of the canvas as um, our areas for clouds. I personally don't want to do that today on this. I want this to be all painted. So I'm coming back in and filling in the, the little spots with all of the various shades of blue that I've used. There. Go back into floaty medium. Get some up there. Get some more blue, dark blue here. Okay. Then I'm going to turn it now around. Oh, I should tell you, the reason why I turned it upside down was because um, it's easier to paint a horizon line like when it when it's above you and you're painting like this versus trying to paint like that. So that's why, I, excuse me, that's why I turned it around. Hello, Maria. Thank you for joining. And I'd like to say, um, remind everybody that my husband's not here, so I'm trying to keep up with the comments and questions. And I appreciate everybody signing up. And I'm Nancy Smith, um, one of the Donna's certifying elite educators. Okay, so there's my sky. I'm really happy how the, the it went from dark blue to light blue. I'm going to add a little clouds though. So using my same brush, not cleaning, I'm just going to get a little bit of white. Here again, I'm using the right brush, so I'm on the hairs. And I'm just going to, um, here again, bounce across. I'm going to hold my brush like this. I'm just going to, you know, whoa, bounce. Go around like that. We got a cloudy day. Okay. All right. So I'm good with that. I'm still happy with my water and my sand. And so I'm going to go off to the next step. And that's, we're going to go to the tree. Okay. Any questions before I move on here? I, I do think there's like a few minute, not minute, but a few second delay. But I'll try to catch up. Okay, now I um, would let this dry before I go on to the, um, the tree. Bec the reason why is it's, even though I skimmed across the surface and I painted on the flat of a rake brush, there's still quite a bit of paint here, and it's really uh, wet, so let it dry. So we let it dry, and so I'm ready now to paint uh, my palm tree. For this, I'm going to use Burnt Umber. I'll move that back. And burnt Umber. I'm going to do a touch of linen. Sap green. Citrus green. Again, all multi-surface paint. And um, some lemon custard. Okay, if that's not all of them, I'll, I'll catch them up as I go. Okay. So here's my sand, ocean, and sky. I'm going to have my palm tree come from the side up here. But let me show you like um, the sort of the design here. So I'm coming up from the edge like a finger, and then I'm making an arc right there. So with this brush, I'm going to uh, just go on the corn again on the hairs, the red hairs, get some burnt umber. Then I'm going one finger up, and I'm going to go to, let's say, right there. That's going to be the point of my palm tree. So I'm just on my chisel edge of this rake, my brush handle straight up and down, finger from the bottom, make like a little arc right here. So that's going to be the first stroke for the palm tree, and I'm just going to go and make another one right here. Then I'll come back. 
I'm just going to add just a little bit of linen on one corner of my brush. And when I stroke, that will just offer a little variation of color here. Now, I do want to say, um, don't be don't be alarmed that I'm just doing this one brown and then a little touch of lemon. Uh, I yeah, linen. Because once this trunk dries, I'll be adding final touches. So this is this is what we're the stage we're at now. I'm just making my little stroke right there. And it will tweak it when it's when we go on. Okay. Then I'm taking my brush. I just wiped it. Going to go into sap green, pure sap green. Load that. If you don't have sap green thick, it would be okay. Now another thing about our palm tree, it's growing in the wild. It's it's on an uninhabited part of Hawaii. It's not on one of those resorts. So that said, there's no one there trimming all the fronds every night. So let's just bring some down here. We're just going to bring a bunch of fronds coming all in all directions. And I'm painting this on the chisel edge of my brush. And I just go around almost like a little umbrella. Just keep going up like that. I'm going to start at the bottom and then move up because the idea is the fronds will, will be overlapping as they go up. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm following my notes. Okay. So I'm doing um, full sap green. And here's the part of making fronds with the rake brush. I'm touching, I'm starting at the top or the center where the where it touches the palm tree. I'm touching that line. I'm on the chisel. I'm touching, pulling. Very light, um, very light stroke. I'll show you on paper so you can see better. Here's our line. I'm touching, pull. Whoops, pulling. Touch, pull. Touch, pull. Get paint all the time. This brush isn't holding very much paint, so I'm always coming back on the side puddle. I don't want a blob of paint like we um, like double load two, two or three times. You know, I just am stroking on the side here because I want very light paint. And I just come down. So that's, this is what I'm going to be doing right now, this right here. Started at the top, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. And I'm angling down toward the, toward the tip of the frond, touch, pull, touch, pull, to where when I get to the bottom, I'm almost straight. Okay. Now, I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. I'm going to go on to this one. So I'm going to go back and forth to let, let them dry a little bit before I add the second layer of that. So here again, at the same, it's the same stroke. Touch, pull, touch, pull. Always come back for paint. Okay. And I'm doing, these are going to be like the back of the fronds, so they, they, they are a little darker. So that's why I'm using just sap green right now. Okay, so I painted those two, so I'm going to just wipe my brush off. And I'm in these two, I'm going to go into yellow ochre. And I had still some on my plate, so I'm going to just stroke a little bit of yellow ochre on the rake hairs. And I'm going to treat these two as the ones that they're sort of falling down and they're getting a little brownish. So this yellow ochre streaked over the green is going to give us a nice little dark golden look. Now these, I, the first layer I stroked down. So these I'm going to stroke a, a more straight out and I'll show you how that goes. More out like this. 
um, let me see if y'all can see that. I'll do it here. So where this came down, now I'm stroking out this way. Getting, getting more paint. And I'm touch, pull, touch, pull out this way. So that way I see the... I see the dark and I see the yellow ochre. Go get some more here. Do the same thing. These are just little short ones. These, this one's on its last leg there. Okay. I'm going to wipe my brush off, go into sap green. I'm cleaning up this one front. I went over the edge that was a little too much for me. If I go over the edge, I don't mind normally, but on that one, it, it just was a lot. So I just cleaned up that edge. Go back and I'm going to do the second um, front. And I notice I'm coming down um, a lot where it, cover, it could even cover the first because this is how how I tend to paint, unless I'm painting something specific like our flowers or things like that, I tend to paint impressionist and this is not maybe something you're going to see as a photograph. This is this is just a really nice palm tree sitting on the beach ungroomed. In this case I want to go into um, my citrus green I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to go straight into citrus. And same 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 stroke, just coming a little different so I can see the dark green against the this light green through the other side. You can see where this goes really fast. I'm going a little slower because I'm explaining as I paint, but you can imagine if you're at home by yourself how fast this will be. I mean, it, it takes no time at all. I'm going to do my next one. And I think these make these this little design, like I'm painting it on a canvas, but it would be really cute as a card. I've, I've made uh, palm tree cards. I've even painted this scene on my suitcase where it's like a, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, there's a word, like this, I'll show you, like this. Something like this is what I've painted on my suitcase. You know, no straight edges, it's just all coming in and out. Um, I really like that. And TSA is always saying, oh, I like your suitcase. Let me just check the comments. I'm, it doesn't scroll automatically like I thought. Oh, um, I'm using Canvas. I'm a, using a 5 by 7 uh, Canvas. Hi, Debbie. Thank you. And I shall be seeing you tonight. Going into the light green. Okay, that didn't see it very much because I didn't wipe my brush off. Thought I could get away with it, but I couldn't. So I'm going to add a little bit like that. Keep going up. We're almost done on this, on the first stage of this, the green. Now this one, I'm still letting it fall. It's still falling over. This one is going to fall over too wasn't strong enough to stand straight. Okay, these are these guys are at the top. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm over here. I'm wiping my brush. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to add yellow to these and see how that will look. These are like at the top, catching the sun rays. Do 
you see, I didn't really like the shape of that one. Did you see how I sort of cheated and made the yellow go farther? That will, that will hide part of that. And also what I can do is bring this one up just a little bit. And I think that I'll like that a little better right there. Okay. Now this one, sometimes you'll see, you'll see the fronds grow like this. It, it's standing up, you know, straight up. So that's how I'm going to paint this. You see, you see these all different directions. So I'll just paint it like that. And I'm just going to leave it alone right now. So, okay. Um, we're now at this stage and I just want to like step back and look, am I happy with what I've got? And I'm, and this is like the first stage of the, the tree. And I'm going to say, yes, I am. But am I crazy about this part? Not necessarily. So um, you just have to stop and think, how, how would you want to paint another one that would, you know, be pleasing for you? And I want to... Um, See what I got over here on the side. Okay, um, I'm sort of cheated because I want this to dry for the next step. So I painted my uh, my second stage now, and so what I did was I added a little um, lighter one in the back. That that's what my solution was for this. But your solution could be whatever you want, what however you. Um, envision it or if you have a picture that you've taken and how that palm tree goes so what I did was I wanted it a little lighter than these dark greens so what that just meant I went into a touch of floating medium not too much and a mix of sap green and <clears throat> citrus green and I'm just going to stick a really little short guy back here just to give the impression that there's another frond back there. I might even do it on this side too. Just just a little, just some little coloring. So, okay, well that's that's our next stage. And like I said, when I'm painting, I personally like to have my different layers dry um, so I don't get mud. If, when we go to the adding some additional palm palm fronds on this it's going to get really muddy on us so it's good to just let it dry and it doesn't take long you all know it only takes like 15 minutes 20 minutes naturally but you could even use a blow dryer and it goes faster so okay so i'm going to let this dry and go on to my next step so here it is, we got it painted and it's dry. So then you want to look at this and say, <clears throat> that it's all like um, the same dimension, you know, they're all, it's all like a flat design. What can I do to make it look like there's some, there's some of these fronds sticking out? Well, one way, one thing that I did, I painted some lighter ones and smaller ones up here in the front. So I got this, got the mix of the sap and citrus. I, I really didn't add white. I did right here just to see what it would look like, but you don't want it like real light. It's not like a spring growth through there. So what you can do is coming right here, you can just add like a, a, a short one in a different color. And here again, don't worry, this isn't um, final. This just was my first stroke. So I'm going to add something there. I can add one that bends, like I can have a frond come up here, come up this way. And then let's say it, it snapped, it broke and it bends down this way. And that's nice because you, you've broken up that spoke look. It comes up and down. I'm gonna 
add just a few dark ones on that one. So I got this one going, and I'll paint this one in sap green. This one, your fronds are going to come like this, go in the direction we were painting, is toward the tip, up, but because it bent, I'm going to be overlapping most of those this way, come down this way, and then I'll bring that down. Okay, so you can see just by adding like this bent one or this other little one here, you've offered some breaking up of that spoke type look. Very easy just by adding a couple. Now I'm going to add, a, I want this one bright, so I'm going to add some yellow to this and see if that will help uh, brighten that up there. Okay, good like that. Okay. What I want to do too is add some little like highlight points. And for my highlight points, that is when I will use white or yellow. And I'm going to go yellow first just to show. So I have just a little bit on my brush. And at the tips, I'm just going to do just a couple strokes like that of yellow. Over here, this one, this side is getting some some sun. So let's just hit a couple of strokes of yellow there. You even could do a couple right up here. Maybe right over here. Don't not don't get carried away, but you can add a couple touches there. Let's we can do some in white. This is where I think I want to have some white just to really make those stand out that they are um, in front. They're in front there. Okay. This is all going to be dark. These are the backs that we made faded. It, so um, I think that's really all I want to do on the, on the yellow. We've already added um, yellow ochre to that one to make it look like it was sort of um, dying. I could even add just a smidgen of burnt umber there on the brush, and that will give it some brown touches to make it even look more so. So, you know, like I said, I just go through and um, hit some touches right there. Go right here and uh, hit some yellow, light yellow, green there. Okay, um, the trunk. I want, it sort of um, is a mix of linen and brown. So what I'm going to do, wipe my brush. I'm going to go into the burnt, full burnt umber. I'm going to stroke some darkness right along this edge here. Then wipe my brush and go into a yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre on one side of my palm tree. I don't know why it's the thing with me, but you're always going to see yellow ochre in my palm tree. Sometimes orange. Okay, final touch. You can, um, on the tip of your brush, Okay, I'm doing this because I'm demonstrating a rake brush, but in real life, you could use the handle of your script liner. Then you could just like make little, a couple little uh, circles here for coconuts. And that always adds a final little touch there. And so I think we're done. Um, so this is it. And like I said, I, it's, it's such a cute little, it could be a card, I put it on luggage, put it on canvas. I, I sell these things a lot, <laughs> these little 5 by 7s um, because you don't always have to use teal. Use the color of water where you're, where you're at, because um, it's amazing, well to me, I was amazed because I never traveled very much. All the different water colors that you see wherever you go across the um, Caribbean and Hawaii and everything. So, okay, um, I think that's it. So let me turn my camera around and see if any of you have any questions. 
So hold on, I'm going to move this up. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Pat. I know, isn't it just like the simplest little cute thing possible? <laughs> but um, I mean, just want to remind, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not look. I'm just looking at my papers. I'm not organized. Like I said, I don't have my husband here today. So um, I just want to thank you all for watching. I, I'm, I hope you all enjoyed this. And I shall see you um, next week. Convention's in two weeks. So I'm hoping to do a live uh, from convention. Not, of course, um, paint anything, but just show you around and let you know what's going on. So, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. And we shall see you next week. Bye.